free society, there is always room for racists, imbeciles, idiots, false spreaders to exist. That's what it means to be true. And I've said this a million times, and I'll say it again on your show. I'm Jewish, as you know. There is no greater, more offensive lie that you could say than to deny the Holocaust. There's nothing more offensive, right? The, 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 the most documented historical event that has led to the systematic eradication of a people in the most industry level way. Uh, so there's nothing more you know, offensive than to deny it, yet I support the right of Holocaust deniers to exist. I may not invite them on my show because I think that it is fruitless, pointless for us to debate what is right. The, but they have a right to exist. So what does it mean that someone is going to adjudicate misinformation, disinformation? No, let the autocorrective process of debate and the scientific method message decide that, uh, method decide that. Yeah, and people should know also that your life experience was far more extreme than the average person's. When you're, when you're saying this, you're coming from Lebanon where you literally flee for your life, your family flee for their lives because you're Jewish. Exactly. Like it wasn't, it's not as simple as I'm Jewish and denying the Holocaust is offensive right. to me because I'm Jewish. Like, no, you flee for your because life of, because you were Jewish. Bingo. And yeah. yet I support and the rights to the So what, what greater commitment to absolute freedom of speech can you exhibit? So, so I hate all this stuff. I hate this idea that there should be hate speech laws. You can get on the pedestal, pedestal and say, Jews suck. And you know what? You're an idiot, but that's cool. What you can do is say, let's go to the corner of 7th Street and 8th Street, whatever, at 8th Avenue, and kill every Jew that's at that synagogue. So short of incitement to violence, short of defamation, everything goes. Yes. No, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I do also agree with you more about Holocaust deniers. There's a lot of people that say really ridiculous shit online. And what we need is people that correct them and do it with a, a sounder argument and a more convincing Thank argument. You. And then you allow people to debate. What people are concerned with, and I think people have this naive perception about the dis, about disinformation, that there are people out there that are dumber than them and they'll get talked into things that aren't true. That's what it is. It's protecting people that are dumber than them because they're not getting sucked into it. You know, like say if you have a bunch of people that believe you're as well. You know, who, who are we protecting by not allowing people to make videos about the earth being flat? We're all protecting morons. That's it. Because it's not going to trick you and it's not going to trick me and it's not going to trick most people. And the beautiful thing about someone coming out and saying the world's flat is that other people will say, actually, they proved the world was round a long time ago and this is how they did it. Not only that, we have satellites that fucking rotate around the earth and they go very specific miles per hour. You can actually time them. You know when they're going to pass by. Not only that, we've had satellites that are in space that look back and take photos of Earth. Not only that, every fucking planet is round. So the likelihood that Earth is this weird flat thing that's shaped like a frisbee, while everything is round like a ball, doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Well, that's what the process of spreading correct information to counteract this information looks like. The problem is we have these election terms and there are like four years, right? And then every four years, a new president gets elected. Well, if you can just trick people enough to get someone into office, that person can do a lot of damage. Yeah. And that, that's what they're worried about. So, unfortunately, that this this thing, this machine of spreading information and also this process of picking a new person every four years, it gives people this sense of urgency that they have to stop information immediately, right now, which is what led people to make sure that the Hunter Biden story, the laptop story, in half a mile, merge onto Queen Elizabeth Way, was removed from Twitter, right? which is pure insanity. Pure insanity, because it's a 100% legitimate story. It's now been substantiated. It's now being openly discussed in the New York Times and the Washington Post and all these other liberal newspapers. They wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole before the election for fear that Donald Trump is going to get elected again. So through their own fear of this process of truth, that their truth wasn't going to be convincing enough, they decided to censor fact and news and real information. And they did it for the good of the people that were too dumb. That were, they, because they're not going to, like, those people are not going to vote for Donald Trump. Just, if, if you look at the hardcore.
hardcore left people in this country. They're not going to vote for Donald Trump just because Hunter Biden is corrupt and just because it appears that Joe Biden is corrupt as well and that they were getting bribes from Ukraine and he did have a job he was completely unqualified for and it was paying an exorbitant amount of money and was smoking crack. And like, you know, and was a sex But uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe he just likes to party. Right. I don't know. But the, the point is, this is all real information that was pertinent to our understanding of who Joe Biden is and who his son is and what kind of business dealings were they were they involved in and shouldn't this demand an examination? But they wanted Trump out so bad they decided to censor. Well, this is a fucking slippery slope, a terrible slippery slope. So let me give you the, the academic analysis of what you just said. So in, in ethic, in ethical systems, there are two systems of ethics. There's what's called consequentialism, right? So is it okay for me to lie? Well, it depends if the consequences of that lie protect someone's feelings. So for example, if my spouse says that I get fat in those jeans, then I better put on my consequentialist hat really quickly and say, my God, you've never looked better in this way, right? Therefore, in this case, the consequences of the lie are noble and therefore it's okay to do it. The ontological ethics are operates in the absolute realm. It is never okay to lie. Right? Now, the reality is, for most things in life, we typically are consequentialists, and that's fine. But when it comes to the truth or foundational principles, then you should be completely deontological. So let me give you an example. We both know someone who's been on this show, maybe remains a friend of yours, less so of mine, for reasons that are unrelated to me, who violated the ontological ethics when he went on Twitter and celebrated the fact that Jack Dorsey had, uh, you know, taken out Donald Trump's uh, account, Twitter account. I mean, not that it's literally Joe, Jack Dorsey, but he kind of right. Thank you, Jack, for doing this, right? Yeah. So what did he do there? What he, he was a consequentialist. He violated a deontological principle, which says that you never violate, you know, the freedom of speech. Right? But in his case, Orange Himmler is so dangerous that if I have to violate this deontological principle only for this one time, then it is worth doing it. It's not unlike Brett Kavanaugh, right? What people said, well, sure, he may technically not be a gang rapist when he was 16 going up and down the East Board raping every single woman in sight. But this, the presumption of innocence here doesn't apply because this isn't a court case. It's only a job interview. So let's not grant him that courtesy of presumption of innocence because it's too dangerous to have a gun. So that's where all of those cases come from. There are, when it comes to truth, when it comes to foundational principles, be the ontological. For all other things, be a consequentialist. Yes, and it's so important for the dissemination of information. It's so important for our collective understanding of what's true and what's not true. Right. And it, when you violate that, and as soon as you make these decisions based on ideological principles rather than based on the true desire to understand objectively the facts, right? And that's where we find ourselves today, which is grossly highlighted and exaggerated by social media because these echo chambers that people get in and then they seek approval and they seek validity from all these other people that are that share the same ideology and then they all support each other and they virtual signal to each other and then you just you develop these bizarre like groups of humans like I love following certain people 